Hello again, it's Ty Warner with Tyke Engineering and Kissoft Tech Support. I wanted to just briefly go over some um, Kissoft 2024 release notes. Uh, of interest is this Kiss design. Uh, Kissoft has done a really nice job of updating and making this a powerful all-in-one um, software for gearbox design. We have uh, multiple um, multiple windows. We, we, it's fast, intuitive, it's versatile. It's uh, It really is doing a nice job here. And uh, you can sketch your gearbox design, put all your machine elements in it. It automatically updates here to your, uh, your, your 3D model. You've got your boundary conditions, system data, ratios. You've got all of your uh, background calculations shown here, all of your machine elements. It, it really is a nice, nice package for a complete gearbox design. The, the interface consists, of course, you have your library, model, tree, sketcher, calculation. Same as what we had before, except there's more of it. So now we can, um, under the report tab, we can do a lot more with uh, specific reports that we want to see. And you can actually create your own tables now, like we, we were able to in KISSIS. But we can do that now in KISS Design. It's really, really nice. So I've opened up KISSoft. And you can see we still have the same, uh, more or less, the basic interface for KISSoft that doesn't really change. We have news, training courses, events, articles, that sort of thing. Uh, we have our modules. If we scroll this over a little bit, we have our tutorials, examples, search content. None of this stuff really changes. The layout is, is pretty much the same. If I double-click on KISS Design, it brings me into the new um, interface it's it's not completely new but it's uh it's it's like it's updated so we have our, our typical sketcher boundary system data information we have our control panel and our element editor that sort of stuff and then we have our our shaft view all of our machine elements we've got interference fits key connections spline uh, belt and chain drive that sort of stuff and then our other uh, machine elements that sort of thing we have our Element view on the bottom. So if you want to look at shaft hub connections, carriers, bearings, switchables, that sort of thing, uh, they're right there. If we want to design a gearbox, it's really a simple thing. We can uh, click on the on the nodes, create a shaft um, over here in the in the sketcher window, and then that's, that that sketch will actually turn into a gearbox really quickly. So say I have a a two-stage gearbox. I can click here and double click to start. So if I double click here, here's a shaft. Okay. I can escape to end. This blue dotted line is the center line. Put that there. Um, I double click to start another shaft. Double click to end. Blue line. Um, and maybe I double click the third shaft, uh, escape to end. I have this blue line. It's going to it sets the center line of that shaft. Okay. I have three shafts. We'll call it a, a two-stage gearbox. And now I can simply highlight a node right there. You see that little box. And I can either right-click and add one of these uh, machine elements, or I can come over here to this side. So maybe I put a coupling right there. Um, if I double click this node, I can right click. I'm going to add a bearing. Um, in the middle here, I'm going to double click. I'm going to add a gear. And uh, I'll add a bearing out here. Okay. Um, and if I don't want this, I can simply uh, double. I can, I can move. Whoops, I zoomed in here. But I can move this. this end. And if I don't want that end, I can just highlight it like I did and hit delete and it drops it down here. So now I don't have my gear and my bearings. Okay. I'm going to move this back. I can move it with my move here. Um, there, I just centered that. All right. So now um, these are my buttons up here. I can uh, use them when this around. 
So now I'm going to add uh, a bearing out here maybe. Um, I can move this shaft. I can do what I need to do with it. I just double click and I create that little box on that node. And then I right click and I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add a, a gear. Maybe I add a, a bearing out here. And maybe I add a bearing right here. And you can see each one of these points is a, a segment of the shaft. Okay, so now if I can put another point here, but I don't I don't really need that. Okay. I can extend it. I can lengthen the section. There's other things I can I can remove the unused dots. I can show annotations, that sort of thing. Um, I'm just gonna right click on here and I'm gonna hit delete. Okay. I don't need to be able to delete that escape. Point needs to go away. There. Um, and then I've got this other shaft up here. This may maybe my output shaft. I'm going to add a bearing. I'm going to add a bearing out here. And maybe in here I'm going to add this this gear. Okay. And then out here maybe I, I put my my coupling on here. All right. And when I want to connect these these gears, I simply highlight the gear and I drag a line to this gear. Okay, and now it's connected. I do the same thing here. I highlight this gear. Oops. I highlight that gear and I come up and I connect this gear. Okay. And now I've got these things going on. I can, um, and I've got my calculations down here. You see how they've already updated in my gear contacts. Um, I don't know what the center distance is going to be, but um, let's, if I look at my system data, I can actually go up here to my calculation and I can put in ratio. And now I have, for each gear pair, pair one and pair two, I've got these, uh, these, these different metrics I can use, okay? And I can set this differently as well. So here I have gear one A and B. <laughs> Are my inputs so I can change either one of these and if I want to I can bring this down and I can use gear A and the gear ratio and now if oops, okay well we can play with this anyway so if, if, if this is going to be, let's say it's 16 teeth, so I double click this one at 16, and I want this to be a ratio, I put my ratio in here, maybe it's 2.8, and it automatically updates this uh, number of teeth gear B, okay? The way I've designed this set, this up, um, is not a two-stage, it's actually a, um, a three, linear three gear train. Maybe I don't, I don't want that, okay? So I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, calculation here. I'm going to go in, double, come on, double click here, and I'm going to add another gear, and then I'm going to connect these two gears. Now I have a true um, two-stage gearbox. Now when I go to my ratio, and I want gear A and gear ratio. If I want a 2.8. Okay, or maybe, and then maybe I want a, uh, a 1.6 right here. It automatically updates my my number of teeth on gear B. Okay, and then what I can do very quickly is over my cylindrical gear pair here in this table over on this side. Um, I highlight gear pair one, and if I open this up, you can see I've got. Um, information here. I've got a center distance, axle offset, I've got a, a gear ratio, uh, torque, speed, that kind of thing. I can I can set my center distance right here uh, based on the uh, the module of what this is. So I click this off and I set this 61 millimeters. Okay. Now I highlight the second one. 
I do the same thing, 52. All right. Now, if I go to my 3D viewer, because here's my sketch, if I go to my 3D viewer, I've got a, a two stage gearbox already put together. Okay. I've got bearings and shafts. I've got my couplers. Um, I can I can now go to my boundary conditions here, and I can add boundary condition one and two. The element's not defined. I'm going to grab coupling one and coupling two. Boundary one will obviously be my input, and now I can define um, the types of things that that I want on here. So. Uh, Oops. All right. Uh, we can set. We can. We can do our setup. Boundary one is going to be torque and speed. Okay. And boundary two, we're not going to have anything because we're just going to look at the output. So now, if I go up here to boundary one, I can put the torque. Let's say it's 100 newton meters, and the speed is um, 1800 RPM. Okay, and then this is going to be, you know, boundary one and boundary two. Okay, now I can run this and I get a pretty quick update on what, you know, what I have here. I've got some root safeties and some flank safeties. Uh, I've got my ratios defined and my system data. I didn't change anything here, but I certainly could. Maybe it's not 20,000 hours, maybe it's Maybe it's 2,000 hours. Um, I can change it. I can add in here. If I add a few of these, I can I can make this be the shafts. I can set the the gears. Maybe I set the. Uh, um, what else can we in here? Well, let's start with that. Um, in the shaft bearings and gears, I can. I can click on here and drop down and say the calculation method, the, the required reliability, that sort of thing. On the gears, I can define the material. If I make this gears again, cylindrical gears, I can define the material or I can define uh, you know, face load factor, any of these types of things, right? So on the calculation method for reliability, we have uh, that kind of stuff. What else can we put on here? We can put in in the cylindrical gears. We can define the material. We can pick that right here. Okay. If you didn't like the material, we can grab the lubricant. It's a type of lubricant for the gears, a lubrication type. Um, on the calculation method, if I select this, I can over here and I can pick any of these that I have in my module. So let's say it's uh, ISO 6336 2019. Maybe the material is a uh, let's, let's grab an 8620. That should be in here. Right there is an 8620. Okay. Um, for the shafts, let's make that a let's make that material a, a through hardened steel C45, maybe 1045 steel. We don't need this one here. I'm just going to remove that. So you can do that any time. Now, if we do the upgrade here, we're going to rerun this. And what do we see here? And there's no change in the material, so that was probably a, a through a carburized steel, anyways. But let's, uh, I mean, you can see how quickly this went. And I can, I have a viewer here. Um, if I want to change the position of things, so if I move this down, if I want to change the position of anything here, I can, I can go back into my, my gear contacts. I can hide, highlight this. And you can see I got a polar angle. So if you look at the light, we're talking about where this gears contact each other. That's a little light bulb here. But let's say I want to make the first 
uh, contact, a 30 degree contact. I make that 30 degrees and that moves it up. Okay. And then let's say the second contact, I want to make 30 degrees. So I go to gear pair two and I go 30 degrees and that moves that. Okay. And it's always from here and up, but maybe I make it uh, minus 20. Okay. So you can set your, your positioning in there very easily. And then you can look at uh, axial offsets and uh, that sort of thing. But you see, I mean, quickly, I have a model set up here, right? I mean, it is quickly. I can see what it looks like. I can, I can um, make adjustments. And we're just touching on, the, on these. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information that comes out on this and, and the types of things you can do. Uh, and just quickly, if I look at reports and I go to my gears and I want to look at uh, service life and damage, let me run this calculation quick. Now if I go to my report and I say I want to see my, my gear service, service life and damage, uh, here comes a report. If I double click that, I can pull it out of here. Um, overview of service life and damage. Uh, here, right here, it tells me, you know, what's going to fail. You know, this is my damage percent, my tooth flank, my right tooth flank. So left and right down here, you can see that um, this is the driving flank, obviously, because this is the only one that has damage. And uh, this would be the driving flank on the on the output. And it makes sense to me that. So that's the service life. Um, there's other reports. Oops. Other reports in here. Gear matching forces, circumferential pitch points. Like if you want to look at the meshing forces here, you, you've got the force. I mean, the, it, there's just a whole whole bunch of new things that we can that we can use in here to uh, really design a gearbox and do a good job at it. So, and and still we still have the if you double click on one of these over here, you, it pulls up Kisssoft in the background just like we did with Kisssys when you when you close it. Uh, it says, do you want to lock it? We say yes, and then it locks that right here. There's a little lock. If you want to unlock it, you can unlock it. Um, the same thing with the gear pairs. If I double click on the gear pair here, it opens up Kisssoft in the background. I can do all my stuff here, like if I got contact analysis and that sort of thing. And there's actually some other stuff in here um, with the contact analysis as well. Um, we've got load spectrum, power splits, power. I mean, there's a whole, a whole bunch of cool things that we can do with gearboxes now with the KISS design. So um, KISS design will be the design tool after 2027. KISS SIS is going to phase out, but we're going to be able to do everything that we can do in KISS SIS. We'll be able to do in KISS design and even more. It'll be, a, it's, it's going to be a great um, product design tool. So if you're an engineer and you could see, um, you know, it didn't take very long to create a, a two-stage gearbox. And, and we have examples that you can open, um, complex examples, not so complex examples, simple examples like this. Um, definitely, if you don't have uh, KISSOFT 2024 downloaded, if you're using KISSYS today, this is what you're gonna wanna switch to in the future. So uh, really powerful, uh, really great software. So if you have questions about this software, um, Feel free to reach out to me, ty.warner at kissoff.ag, and uh, we can set up uh, we can set up a uh, demo if you wanted to uh, convert your your kiss off. You already have kiss design because we're going to convert that over with with Gleason and, and Kissoff. So um, it's a it's a really great tool. Uh, let me know what you think. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to try and come out with more information on KISS design um, and little subsection tutorials and how-tos. I think that will be pretty important. So thanks for watching.